I'm Joy Morris, inviting you to listen to True Stories of the Wild West, hosted by C.R. King, a production of R.K. Enterprises. Hello, everyone. C.R. King here. Today, we're going to speak about the cow towns of Kansas. <clears throat> town, there was no cow town until after the Civil War. There was no cattle drives until after the Civil War. Why? Texas was a Confederate state. Kansas was not. Well, what happened was cattle was never shipped anywhere. And so they just sat around grazing and breeding. And there was an overabundance of cows. Texas was devastated because shipping cows out well, that was a good part of their economy. And it was the federal government, the USA, to make sure that they could not do that, ship cattle anywhere. It, it was effective. However, when the war ended, a number of cow towns began to spring up. Because the trains were moving out, there were railheads, and they would expand and expand and expand and it'd go from one town to the next town to the next town moving westward so so it was a good time men were coming back from the war they needed jobs their farms were gone and they got jobs as cow drovers cattle drovers they were not called cowboys cowboys was a negative term in those days, an insult. So they were drovers. So, um, there was a man by the name of Chisholm who surveyed out a trail, went to the Texas ranches, and said, Follow the trail. And they did. It took months to get to Kansas. So let's talk basically. Well, before we do that, just so you know the time frame, this whole thing about these cattle towns, cowboy towns, whatever you want to call them, started around 1865, and it lasted until 1885. Hundreds of thousands of Texas Longhorns were driven to these shipping points. But by the mid-1800s, a number of events ended the cattle drive era in Kansas. Most approximately was the arrival of the railroad to Texas. And there were quarantine laws because the Longhorns had viruses that could kill off the normal livestock up there. So they were no longer allowed to be shipped up. And that ended it. But the cattle business in Kansas actually did not really end. By 1890, the state ranked third in the nation in cattle production. As to the cow towns themselves, most moved into a quieter existence, became peaceful. Others became ghost towns. So, are we ready to get started? I think so. Now remember one thing before I do get started. The Old West characters gained or, or, or became famous or infamous, however you want to put it, were men such as Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson, Wild Bill Hickok, John Wesley Harding, and uh, gangs like the Jesse James Gang, the Doolin Gang, the Wild Bunch, the list goes on and on. But this was an anomaly. So let's take a look at the real cow towns of Kansas. Our first cow town that was developed after the war is Baxter Springs, B-A-X-T-E-R. It's located in the southeast corner of Kansas. It was in 1865, again after the Civil War, 
The town was laid out on 80 acres of land by Captain M. Mann and J.J. Burns. Soon thereafter, it became known as Baxter Springs. Now, it became the first outlet or deadhead or cattle town for Texas cattle because Missouri declared the Texas cows longhorns off limits. They were quarantined. Baxter's did welcome the Kansas people, welcome the Texas people to Kansas, I should say. <clears throat> the community built stockyards to corral up to 20,000 head. And they provided rangeland with plenty of grass and water. It also, not only being the first cow town, <clears throat> but it also developed a reputation for being one of the wildest cow towns of the West. Baxter Springs remained a cattle outlet through the 70s, 1870s. As the herds were driven up the old John T. Trail. There's not little to say about them, but they were long lasting. Now, the next town, the one I mentioned, is Brookville. Brookville became a cow town when the Kansas Pacific Railroad arrived in 1870. And it served briefly, but it was a shallow cattle shipping area. It boosted 800 people, boasted 800 people, a bank, a newspaper, a telegraph, express office, and a post office. Today, it is virtually a ghost town. There's roughly 200 people that live in the area and no open business, businesses. Okay, Coffeeville. Now, Coffeeville is very interesting. Coffeeville was established in 1803 and occupied by the Osage Indians. They roamed this part of Kansas near the north, northern border of Oklahoma, and they had a better buffalo. The site was first settled by white men in 1869 when Colonel James Caffey established an Indian trading post. Now, everybody knows Coffee Mill because of what happened in the 1800s. It's when the Dalton gang came into town to raid or steal, rob two banks simultaneously. Uh, all but one of the Daltons died. Emmett Dawson survived being shot 23 times. But it was a going cattle town prior to that. And the reason it's so famous is what I just mentioned to you. But it had the saloons, the dance halls, the gambling places, and everything in the city served as the city served three major rail lines. Soon, it took the name Cowtown due to the shipping points status and the large number of cattle grazing the open land or open range surrounding the town. Once the rail hands moved to Texas, Coffeeville settled down at least until that famous Dalton gang raid in 1892. So, so Coffeeville today has a population approaching 19,000. It survived. It started manufacturing oil was discovered in the 1800s. It had a lot going on for itself. Hay City, yes, Hay City got its start in 1867 as the southern branch 
of the Union Pacific Railroad worked his way west. Hayes City was named after Fort Hayes, which was founded in 1865. Hayes, like Junction City and Great Bend, was never a major cattle market, but did receive some business due to its location. So, a combination of the fort, the railroad workers, the freighters, the buffalo hunters, the soldiers, plus occasional cowboys, made it a very rough town. For a number of years, it was at one time sporting, if you will, 37 saloons and dance halls. A number of colorful Old West characters lived there, including the Custers and the seventh Custer and his seventh calvary, Calvary, Wild Bill Hickok, Buffalo Bill Cody, just to name a few. Now Hayes today has a population of over twenty thousand. It survived its heyday. Abilene. Abilene, Abilene's a big town. Well, maybe. Let's see. It also had existed before it became a cow town. In 1857, it was a stagecoach stop. It was officially laid out in 1860. However, it retained a sleepy existence until a man by the name of Joseph McCoy, a, a livestock dealer from Illinois, saw Abilene as the perfect place for a railhead from which to ship cattle from. This was in 1867. So, by 1870, Abilene had also become a lawless town. It hired its first marshal, Thomas Smith, who was the first official, whose first, I should say, his first official act was to issue an order that no one would be allowed to carry far firearms within the city limits without a permit. Now, to my knowledge, this is the earliest time when firearms were outlawed. It's too bad we don't do that today. Look at all the shootings we have. They're basically all one-sided. Okay. Well, Marshall Smith was killed on the line of duty before the year's end. It was an ugly killing, and I won't get into it. Next year... Wild Bill Hickok became the city marshal. Abilene became known as the queen of the Kansas cow towns until new railheads in Newton, Wichita, and Alice became the favorite shipping points in 1872. During its four-year reign, over three million heads of cattle were driven up the Chisholm Trail and shipped from Abilene. Next on the list is Ellis. I'll spell that. E-L-L-I-S. It was primarily a railroad town. When the railroad arrived in 1873, it became a secondary shipping point for cattle herds. In 1875, it took on many of the same characteristics of the other towns. By 1880, the shipping trade was over. The primary agricultural town is home today to about 1,800 people. And actually, one more point, Wild Bill Hickok served as its sheriff in 1870 with the first of post office was established. Ellsworth. Ellsworth, before it became a cattle market, 
was a troubled place. Located in the Smoky Hills region of Kansas, it had long been the home to, to the Cheyenne Indians and others and other tribes. They roamed, roamed the area killing buffalo and however, when the Santa Fe Smoky Hills Trail came through, they began to raid wagons and trains and stagecoaches. Thus, Fort well, Ellsworth, which later changed its name to Fort Hacker, was built. With the, with the railroad extension into Ellsworth, the town quickly developed into a thriving cattle market. It dominated Kansas cow towns from 71 <clears throat> to 75. With the flood of cowboys, also came the gamblers, of course, the outlaws, yes, the prostitutes, and a very bad reputation. Let it be known that it is in Ellsworth where the legend of Wyatt Earp begins. Interesting, isn't it? Like all other of the cow towns, the cattle moved on, and Ellsworth remained a farming community. Today, it has a population of 2,000. Dodge City is next in line. It is the wickedest and most well-known of all of the Kansas cow towns. Dodge got a start before the cattle trade as a stop along the Santa Fe Trail and served as a civilian community for Fort Dodge. It developed into a buffalo hunting town. But then in 1872, the Atchison, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad arrived. When the quarantine laws closed down Wichita, the whole cattle trade, Dodge City emerged as the queen of the cow towns. From 1875 to 1885, more than 75,000 head of cattle was shipped annually. Many thousands more were driven through Dodge to stocks stockyards north of the northern ranges or to be shipped from other railheads. Dance halls, saloons, brothels increased in number to accommodate the many cowboys and in its prime, Dodge City hosted a list of colorful western characters. Names like Wyatt Earp, his brothers, then there's Bad Master Sam with his brothers. And the list goes on and on and on. Well, if you want to know who else, Bill Tillman was considered by, by Bad Master Sam and others as the greatest frontier lawman of them all. Clay Allison was a feared gunslinger, looked short, gambler and gunman, part owner of the Long Branch Saloon. Mysterious Dave Mathers also became a lawman, and Doc Holliday, gambler, gunman, and once in a while he put on a badge to help his pal Wyatt and his brother Morgan. Before, before Dodge City was Newton. Newton was supreme during the 1871 cattle season, at which time there were 12 documented killings. Yet, according to some historians, it was easily double that many. But by the next trail driving season, the railroad had already extended to Wichita. The city of Newton had passed an ordinance 
preventing, pre prohibiting the running of large animals in their city. I guess people like the race. Anyway, the city continued to be a railroad town for more than a century, along with developing into an agricultural and industrial center. Today, it is the home of 17,000. Wichita. Wichita was the first was first settled in 1864 as a trading post. The next year, the Chisholm Trail came through, and trade quickly developed the area. In 1865, the town was planted, surveyed, and more people came. There was a short-lived army post called Camp Bleacher there, which was established in 1868. But it was abandoned the next year. In 1872, the railroad arrived, and Wichita became the destination for Texas cattle. There was cattle that was being driven north along the Trism Trail for shipments by rail to eastern markets. The following year, in 72, 66,000 head of cattle was shipped out of Wichita. Twice as many as from Ellsworth, serving as a town of primarily, as a cow town, I should say, as primarily from 72 to 76. There was a section of the town called Delano, which is where all of the gambling, the dance halls, the prostitutions, the saloons were at. And it was very bad. Odd City is next in line. It is the wickedest and most well-known of all of the Kansas cow towns. Dodge got a start before the cattle trade as a stop along the Santa Fe Trail and served as a civilian community for Fort Dodge. It developed into a buffalo hunting town. But then in 1872, the Atchison, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad arrived. When the quarantine laws closed down Wichita, the whole cattle trade, Dodge City emerged as the queen of the cow towns. From 1875 to 1885, more than 75,000 head of cattle was shipped annually. Many thousands more were driven through Dodge to stocks, stockyards, north of the northern ranges or to be shipped from other railheads. Dance halls, saloons, brothels increased in number to accommodate the many cowboys, and in its prime, Dodge City hosted a list of colorful Western characters. Names like Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and then there's Bad Master Sam with his brothers, and the list goes on and on and on. Well, if you want to know who else, Bill Tillman, who was considered by, by Bad Masterson and others as the greatest frontier lawman of them all. Clay Allison was a feared gunslinger, looked short, gambler and gunman, part owner of the Long Branch Saloon. Mysterious Dave Mathers also became a lawman. And Doc Holliday, gambler, gunman, and once in a while, he put on a badge to help his pal, Wyatt, and his brother, Morgan. Wyatt Earp was a deputy town marshal in Wichita from, 80, from 1875 to 1876. 
He then moved on to Dodge City. He had a reputation for Wichita before he ever before he ever made it to Dodge. His brother went with him. So today Wichita is the largest city in the state of Kansas. It is a major manufacturing area for aircraft. Dodge City is next in line. It is the wickedest and most well-known of all of the Kansas cow towns. Dodge got a start before the cattle trade as a stop along the Santa Fe Trail and served as a civilian community for Fort Dodge. It developed into a buffalo hunting town but then in 1872, the Atchison, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad arrived. When the quarantine laws closed down Wichita, the whole cattle trade, Dodge City emerged as the queen of the cow towns. From 1875 to 1885, more than 75 thousand head of cattle was shipped annually. Many thousands more were driven through Dodge to stocks, stockyards north of the northern ranges or to be shipped from other railheads. Dance halls, saloons, brothels increased in number to accommodate the many cowboys and in its prime, Dodge City hosted a list of colorful Western characters. Names like Wyatt Earp, his brothers, then there's Bad Master Sam with his brothers. And the list goes on and on and on. Well, if you want to know who else, Bill Tillman was considered by, by Bad Master Sam and others as the greatest frontier lawmen of them all. Clay Allison was a feared gunslinger, Luke Short, gambler and gunman, part owner of the Long Branch Saloon, Mysterious Dave Matters, also became a lawman, and Doc Holliday, gambler, gunman, and once in a while he put on a badge to help his pal. Wyatt and his brother, Morgan. Wyatt Earp was a deputy town marshal in Wichita from, 80, from 1875 to 1876. He then moved on to Dodge City. He had a reputation from Wichita before he ever, before he ever made it to Dodge. His brother went with him. So, today, Wichita is the largest city in the state of Kansas. It is a major manufacturing area for aircraft. I want to let you guys go now, but I want you to know this will maybe be my last podcast for about two and a half weeks. I have to travel somewhere. However, I've talked about these towns. We'll go into more detail down the line. Take care of yourselves. Until I see you, be safe. Thank you. Stay tuned for next week's tale.